Welcome back to Midpoint. I'm Rick Blackwell. Joining us right now, Monsignor Jim Lasanti of Our Lady of Lords Church. And Monsignor, obviously our thoughts right now with Christians in the Middle East, but also there's some concerns with Christian holy sites. Do you feel that some of them are at risk? And what can we do, Christians around the world, to make sure that those holy sites are going to be sacred and they're still in place? I think we have to exercise political pressure where we can. I think it's important that we let our own congressmen, senators know that this does matter to us. Uh, and, and I have to say, too, that, uh, again, I'm delighted that most of our holiest sites uh, for Christians are in Israel. And I have to say that is one place where our right to worship is protected and defended by the military there. And our religious sites have been protected on a constant basis by Israeli troops. They may not share our faith, but they respect our faith. And, and this is what really is, is missing in this whole picture. You know, twice during his pontificate, Pope John Paul II, now St. John Paul II, called together the religious leaders of all the world and said, meet, meeting them in Assisi in Italy, let's, let's pray together. And he said, look, we're, we're, not, uh, we're not coming to God in the same way, but we're all coming to God, and let's respect the ways in which we come to God and realize the differences don't have to divide us or cause us to set one against another. The insanity of, of fundamentalist terrorism is, is that they're deciding that their God or their vision of God gives them the right to kill God's creation, other people of other religions. It's absolutely contradictory. But uh, back to your question about the sites, I'm, I'm delighted that most of the sites are in Israel where we are protected. But I think that's a good reminder to Americans and people throughout the world that uh, Israel is not just one more country, not, and not just the only democracy that really works in the Middle East. It's also a country that defends the right of people to worship as they choose. That simple right is missing in most Islamic countries, unfortunately. Yeah, sometimes in this terrible plight, it's bringing groups to gr together, and in this case, that is the truth. Uh, by highlighting the plight, though, of Christians, are you worried at some point about retaliation from the people that are persecuting Christians? Well, I don't know how it could be worse. You know, just in recent weeks, we've heard of the slaughter of uh, innocent teenagers in, in uh, Iraq and in Syria who refused to renounce their faith and were uh, crucified, hung, and beheaded because of it. Uh, so I, I don't know how much worse it could be. They're killing innocent people for no reason except that they believe differently. Uh, things are about as bad as they can be when you have people like Chuck Hagel and others in the government saying they've never seen this kind of uh, take no prisoners, invincible evil. You know, there's a great book by Iris Chang called The Rape of Nanking, and when you read it and you hear what the Japanese did to the people of China during World War II, you're appalled. You think, thank God we've moved on. But we haven't. Here we are in 2014, 2015, still killing innocent people simply because they believe differently than we do. It's crazy. And I think the nations of the world need to bind together and say, we will not give in to this evil and do what we can to stop it. I would just hate to see America be the only country doing that. Uh, religious freedom is not just the concern of some, it's a concern of all. And, uh, you know, we have to be stronger, too, in saying to our Islamic allies, you know, this, this is something you need to get involved in more deeply. You know, it's interesting that our troops served for many years in Saudi Arabia, and if you wanted to say uh, any kind of public mass, you were forbidden. It had to always be celebrations of our, our faith in private because there was no tolerance for religious freedom in that country. Well, this is a country that American troops have, have stepped in to defend. Yeah. We're defending countries that in turn don't defend our right to worship as we should. We need to do better at reminding them that we're all in this together, that we respect their worship and their ways of worship, and that uh, they should do the same for us. You've mentioned some really specific goals, but what about specific foreign policy, different things the United States government can do to try to improve the situation? Well, I think, I think we're rightly trying to uh, create a, a coalition. And, and uh, going back to my earlier point, I think that's really important that Americans, let's face it, I, with all due respect to President Bush and, and Dick Cheney, uh, I don't think Americans ever knew back in 2001 that we were signing up for a 14- or 15-year-old period of, of being at war. We're tired of war, and I think that's a problem because for many of our enemies in the extremist Muslim community, their feeling is, let's just wait. The Americans are tired. They'll sooner or later give up, and then we can take what we want. I think a great mistake we made in Afghanistan was to uh, uh, put ourselves on the line for the surge. That was a good decision. And then followed up by saying, okay, but here's the date we're all getting out of town. So if you're in the Taliban, you just have to wait us out. Monsignor Jim Lasanti, we appreciate your opinion so much. Some really good insight on this Friday afternoon. Thank you so much for being a part of the Midpoint discussion. And thank you so much for watching us on this Friday afternoon. I'm Rick Blackwell in for Ed Berliner.